This is uh, an episode of The Facts, a, a, a talk episode, discussion episode. The Facts, we have music and we have talk, and even in the music there's talk, and music is talk. Well, but uh, that's another thing. Anyway, my name is Lenore von Stein, and I'm sitting here today with two composers, Benita Marcus and John McGuire, whose name I always look have to look at 20 times, even though I've known him for a long time now. <laughs> um, and um, so uh, we're talking not just about music, about about ourselves, it's about music, making music, and also about the situation of artists. And and uh, I have some questions here, and one of them I'd like to put to John is, um, uh, on both of you guys actually, um, freedom of thought, freedom of is freedom of expression, freedom of thought. You know, is this a free country? You know, freedom of ideas. How is that? Important or not important to your work, to the quality of your work, your, your freedom of expression. I'd have to think about that for a while. I'm not quite sure what is meant by freedom. Um, I know that I have to be surrounded by a kind of bubble of calm, or I can't do any kind of work. And if that's how you would define freedom, then I suppose that's what I would have to say I would, I, I would need in order to do any work. What do I mean by a bubble of calm? I often think of uh, the mind as being like a body of water that has to become very calm, that is, can't be roiled, or else sunshine can't refract or get uh, no kinds of rays or anything can, can, can get through it that the mind has to be calm like a calm body of water. If there are roiling factors, and that's what I would call unfreedom, hmm. then nothing can function creatively. So, I don't know, have I offered any kind of a definition of freedom that you could accept or, or relate to? I can accept to? it. I can accept it. Or relate to? I, mean? I, I can relate to it, too. I mean, <laughs> one of the things I like about this TV station that we're working on, Eminem, it's the freest place I've ever been. And, 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 it ha and, and what I mean by that, we're, I never feel um, censored. I never feel any feel, and I've never worked, I don't think I've worked hardly anywhere where that eventually hasn't creeped into the mix. But I don't feel that here at all, which, you know, is a, uh, makes me, you know, very fond of this place. Um, and, and maybe that, you know, so in that way I can relate to the roiling, to the, to the calm. There is no niet. There is no, there is no secret or unspoken niet. There's simply uh, go there, ahead. You know, maybe they don't care and so you can go ahead, but go ahead. Perhaps censorship would be the thing that roils the water then. I think is so. Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, for, for me, I mean, in this kind of self-censorship, will, will people, <laughs> will, I mean, be, I mean, for me, art isn't like a social situation. In a social situation, there may be things I'm not going to say because I know that these people at this dinner table are not going to dig it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, or they're going to, or, or one of the other things that really makes it important for, is, is a motivator for me to make art is that for a lot of my life, uh, people didn't seem to understand what I was talking about. But if I get up on the stage, if I make some music about it or something, they seem to get it, you know. So mm -hmm. I feel, oh, they do understand, you know, at least that part, even if they don't like it, you know, we're on the same page. And I didn't, I was so unsure and it made me so unhappy uh, without that. Uh, so, you know, I just made myself much more comfortable. I mean, art, ma making art makes me more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, if I make, if I do a good piece of work, and I may not like it the next morning, but if I do it that night when I go to bed, I feel a lot better. Mm. How do you feel when you write something that you like? Mm, uh, that's a an interesting question. It's, I think it may be time related. 
I think I may l might like something a minute after I've written it and then dislike it another minute after, uh, uh, after two minutes. And, 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 and as time goes on, these feelings change all the time. So, in other words, it's an almost impossible question for me to answer. I see, I see. No, I, I, I mean, it's just, I, I get all snuggly wuggly sometimes at night, you know, after I've done something like that, and I feel all, you know, oh, I'm safe again. And that feeling is likely to go away the next morning. Well, does, this, does this bring us back to the question of self-censorship, though, some, somehow? How? Um, I think Benita was talking before about, uh, about the importance of not censoring your production. Did yes. I understand that? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. That's the antithesis so, so. of snuggly woggly. <laughs> No, so, not, no really, not really, not at all, not at all. I, <laughs> I can explain myself. Um, I always mm -hmm. think about, uh, I think of, Morton Feldman and I used to argue about whether music was entertainment or art. He felt it was entertainment, which seemed very strange to me. I felt it was art. So... Um, do, do you feel that there's a contradiction there? Can, 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 can it, it be can both? It can be both, yes, of course, it can be both. But um, I think my goal as an artist is to, to sort of uh, explore and uncover things. And um, some, I don't know to what degree that happens in um, entertainment. I'm sure it does, like we could think about film, and of course that's very profound at times. Uh, but um, I always think about starting at the present moment and moving forward into the future. And I'm not really concerned about what music happened in the past, because I know that the music in the past is already part of me. Mm -hmm. I've absorbed it, it's in my DNA, <coughs> it's a given. So I don't really have to feel like, well, I need a theory for this piece or a form for this piece or anything. I just need to be focused, like John suggested, calm in my mind. That's what I would consider focus too. Mm -hmm and you wait for the sounds to come and as they come you work with them and you build from there but there's there's no need to go backwards as far as i'm concerned uh, there's only the need to keep moving ahead and um i think sometimes um, we were talking a little bit about style before and uh, what kind of music do you like and that sort of thing for me, I like all music that's good. I don't care what style it is. I don't care uh, if it's dance music. If it's good dance music, I'm gonna wanna dance to it. If it's a good um, song cycle, then I'm gonna enjoy it. But it has to be good. It's not, you know, I'm not like style oriented. I only like modern music. I don't like this kind of music. I, I really, I, all music speaks to me when it's good. And that's what I want to hear, is I want to, uh, when I listen to music, I, I don't analyze it. I just sit there like a sponge, and I let it do whatever it's going to do to me. I totally allow the performers and the composers to hit me any way they want to hit me, because I want to be totally open to the experience. I think that, that, I think that that's, a, that's something that for a lot of people, like many of the students that I work with, this is a really a, a difficult thing to do. Can you allow yourself, instead of, you know, can you <coughs> listen to that piece of music or look at this painting and, and look, let, you know, can you relax your eyes? Can you relax your ears? Can you, can you, can you, can you let it take you on a trip rather than you tell it, you know, you fit it into the, some rubric that you already have in place for it. In your anxiety, in your in your in your anxiety, you know, which is coupled with ignorance. I mean, it, 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 what is it? It has to, oh, it's a flower, right? I see it's a flower, or what, it's a it's a door opening, or it's a you know. Uh, uh, can you? And I and I think that's something that's that is 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 in short supply in in modern America. Uh, that I think for a lot of people that they, 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 they can't even it, they can't even conceive of letting some letting some 
any more than letting a conversation <laughs> uh, just happen to them and mm -hmm. allowing it to to happen. You know, one of the things you talked about was the difference between the way music and artists are treated in Germany and the way they're treated in just using Germany as an example, it's not the only and the way they're treated in the United States. Well, it was because I lived there for so long. So what are some of the differences? Oh, uh, <coughs> uh, I don't have a list. I only have uh, anecdotes that I've, that I've lived <laughs> through. I always like to tell the one about the uh, German bill collector. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, I was I was living in a in a part of Cologne that was rather poor, and I was rather poor myself at this time. It's in the seventies, and I often hadn't paid my electric bill. So one day the bill collector shows up, and he has a folder uh, about me. I hadn't paid my bills, and uh, uh, I, I let him in my apartment, and he pulled out his folder, and he said, "I see here, sir, that you're a composer." I'm very sorry to disturb you and, and take you away from your work, but do you think you could pay part of your bill? And I d wouldn't expect an American bill collector to act like that. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at so all. So perhaps there is uh, in, in that society uh, a, a greater respect of or appreciation for composers. At least I, I, I felt that way when, and, uh, when, when I was living there. I, I was, uh, since, I've, since I've been back in the States now and then people ask me what, they, what I do, uh, I, I, I'm a little bit embarrassed sometimes to say I'm a composer, but I never felt that way in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. It was more like, oh, you're a composer, wonderful. That was, that was more the reaction I would get there. Here is, what are you, some kind of wise guy or something? Yes, oh, okay. yes, yes. The government told me, the U.S. government told me when I told them my occupation was composer, they said, well, no, it can't be. And I what? said, why can't it be? And they said, because we don't, we don't consider that an occupation. And I said, well, <laughs> I have a Ph.D. in it. I'm known all over the world. I've taught in many universities. I'm a composer. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> what can I say? But um, it's crazy, that kind of attitude. But I also run into that with just so you your run-of-the-mill people where they don't understand what you do all day. And um, they think because you don't check in with a time card somewhere from 9 to 5, you don't have a job. When, in fact, we have the hardest job there is. We work 24 hours a day. We're creating something with our minds that never existed before. We're not selling stamps in the post office. We're doing incredibly difficult work, and we're setting incredibly high standards for ourselves, and we're starting at the beginning, and we're completing the whole project ourselves. So this is not something that the average person really understands. And it's a commitment. I get up in the middle of the night and work, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't stop. It's a 24-hour thing. And, um, but, you know, there's, uh, there's advantages to it because you are living 24 hours in art and music. I mean, what could be more beautiful, really? And, um, but you don't get paid so much for it. So, and, so, and, 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 and as John was pointing out, you don't get the respect. I have a friend that's in Berlin right now, and um, he's a, a, a composer and an artist, Chris Newman. Oh, yeah. And he makes, he pays for almost everything he does with his work. If he owes a doctor $5,000, he'll write a composition for the doctor. If he owes somebody else some money for a couple new suits, he'll give them a painting. I mean, that's totally crazy in our society. That would never happen. Mm. You know, it's I used to know a painter, though. He used to pay his dentist with his paintings, but he had a special dentist. <laughs> wow, I might Indeed. even know who the dentist and painter are. Well, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let me let, let, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this little question because we had talked to you. You were interested in perhaps. Uh, I wrote this thing, artist as, uh, to talk about, artist as egotist, hopelessly vain, art is not serious, difficult, or an important endeavor. You just have to have talent, and, and, and you're irresponsible or childish enough to be an artist. Um, you are both not real and 
too real. You're the yeah, worst was, was part. Was that a statement just now? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get this quote? <laughs> I, I, out of my head. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's felt like for most of my life. And, the, and um, I've been an artist since I was a kid. And and and, and actually, I was, I was I grew up around a lot of artists, but I still felt that way. You know, uh, it's <laughs> it's um, it's uh, it's uh, you know it's a uh, it's. And I don't know if it's different in Germany. It, it, be, it seems like it is it, it, in, in America. It's, it's so difficult to, to. I mean, it seems like such a rock and a hard place kind of profession to go into, and yet. Hmm. Were I, you made to feel that way, or, or did you just? Do you think you just naturally felt that way? Well, me no sabe. I don't know. Uh -huh. Did I? Did I? I, I was I, again. I was reading James Baldwin. He was describing. You know, after he says he gave this little thing of. You know, you're, you're you're 15 years old, and you realize that you're you're moving further away from other people. You're you, they're going this, you're going this way, and then you get older, and you know, after a few lovers that you that you've lost and friends that you've lost because you're you're going this way, and you can't stop yourself. You're going this way, and and so many of the other people you know are going another way, and um, uh, and you you're an artist. I mean, it's like a disease. You know, you 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 <laughs> you. Uh, um, I, I, I think my, my father was very um, uh, tense and uh, angry, and, <coughs> and for instance, if I would want to discuss something about music, he thought he took that as an affront, that I just didn't accept whatever dogma he was, you know, and he changed his dogmas, so he was very interesting that way. But whatever dogma he happened to be behind to at that particular moment, the very fact that I, it, it's sort of like, it's sort of like, it's sort of like questioning one's religion, you know, that you, you know, can we talk about th this, this idea? Uh, well, no, we don't talk about it. You know, we just mm. follow it. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, and, and, and artists break through that, that, that follower, that follower uh, mentality that, that, um, that I think a lot of people in this country anyway find comforting. And they're annoyed at this, these, these, these brigands who, who break through the bank, mm. and um, hmm. yeah, I never felt that way about artists. I always saw what artists did as something very beautiful, and that it was about um, even when it wasn't beautiful, or even when it was ugly. Um, that it was a, a, a still a beautiful message to us, the viewer or the listener or whatever. I also grew up in an extremely musical um, environment, uh, not at home, but in the city that I grew up in. And um, there was also a great deal of um, <clears throat> unhappy young people. Um, unhappy for a lot of reasons. Maybe they were abused as children or something. But these are the people that were going into music because music provided them with something that they were not getting in their lives. Whether it was companionship of playing on a team or something like that, or whether uh, they, for in my case, for instance, I started listening to classical music when I was seven or eight years old on these records that were designed for children. But um, that taught me that what I felt inside was real, because I could tell that these composers felt it. Mm -hmm. And um, it, what I felt inside was not being acknowledged in my environment, not in my family, not, you know, not in my grade school at least. But when I got into music and I began, began playing an instrument, I could express that quality. And um, I know uh, just from all the friends of mine that have become musicians and stayed musicians their whole lives, and we talk now about what our pasts were like and, and what the pain was of our childhood that really made us want to go into music and, and find a haven there. 
We were talking earlier about Alice, the Holocaust survivor, who's 107 and still playing Chopin, and they're making a documentary about her. And she talks about how when you play music, no matter what your surroundings are, you go to another place, a beautiful place. And I think, I, I really feel for the young people today that don't have this opportunity. How is how how is how is how is music and loneliness? How has music staunched your or you know stemmed or or alleviated your loneliness? You're asking me? Yeah. Well, I I I, I, I think I came into music from a different angle than Bonita, for example, mm -hmm. what she was talking about. To, to me, it was just the most natural thing in the world. It was more like uh, 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 an expression of joy rather than a, 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 a haven or a place to... Uh, well, I would say it was expression of joy too. It allowed me to express joy, which I wasn't allowed <coughs> to express I in see. other avenues. Well, I, I, got it, I got it more from my father who was a mm -hmm. singer, an Irish tenor. and. Uh, mm -hmm. That was uh, that was, well, I guess my approach is sort of like his. His was he he would sing when he was drunk and happy, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was always these songs like, uh, 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 my wild Irish rose and Mother McCree and all this all all this repertoire, and that was he sung to me when I was a baby in, in the cradle, and that's where it, that's it, it, it was such a such a beautiful thing that uh, it felt completely natural for me to go in, in, into music from, from, from that place. From that place where it was really fun and it was uh, just a great thing to do and to pass on to, to other people. I, 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 I think my mother, she, she was a singer, like she sing, and I used to make up songs from when I was very mm -hmm. little. And I was I grew up in a housing project, and I was surrounded by some by all kinds of music, and often very authentic versions, not mm -hmm. commercialized versions of something. Mm -hmm. So you could mm -hmm. really feel the you know, and I classical music in my house, and then you know, really good gospel in the next door down, and um, uh, <coughs> uh, but this 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 thing of the connection with. Um, like I, I can, I can almost still remember when I was 12, and my father took me to see uh, UNESCO, the chair and the chairs and the lesson, and the door of heaven opened up. You know, it was, it was, <laughs> I, it, it, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. it was so. It was like it was almost like a similar experience, not quite as dramatic as when I heard Webern. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was, it was, it was, it was so. I was, I wasn't alone. I wasn't alone. I mean, as much as I liked exactly. a lot of these things, I was I, I was no longer alone. Look at I mean, I didn't p exactly understand what he was doing. Or I saw, I remember seeing Donald Madden do Hamlet, and it was, God, you know, or Marlon Brando, or some, you know, it was it was, or, or or some composer, although, although Stravinsky just used to scare me, so I. <laughs> <laughs> I love Stravinsky. <laughs> I like him now more than I did when I was a kid. I used to run out of the room. No kidding. From from what? Pictures? From the Rite of Spring, you know, from oh, those right really scary spring, parts yeah. in the Rite of Spring. You know, I just mm -hmm. was, it, I, uh, you know, it's like some kids run out of the room with uh, the Wizard of Oz at the bad parts. You know. Yeah, I, mean, I, I ran out when Bambi went. Some <laughs> parts of Bambi. Oh, Bambi's scary. I know. It's a frightening story. My kids ran out of the room uh, at the the Firebird. Catch Eye's Infernal Dance. They just, they were out of that room. They were so scared. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, um, we've got three minutes left. Um, I, w I would like to say something that uh, our economy is, is uh, obviously in a very bad situation. And I would love to see all the composers and musicians who have extra time now to start trying to teach the younger generation. That because be they really need it. Mm -hmm. And we have the time and we have the skill. 
and um, I'm teaching now. I, I put up my sign a year ago that I was going to teach, and now I have 11 students, and they're all top-notch composers, more or less. They just have a little refinement to do, and I'm helping them with that. So we find a place to, to uh, find a place to, to teach people and, and mm -hmm. uh, I remember teaching in the public schools and where do they want me to teach? Show tunes. I, could, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> um, well, there are better programs than for the schools now. If there were some, I don't know if they still have funding, but <clears throat> the programs that like the program out of Lincoln Center where they actually uh, prepare the students for um, a performance and they sort of you do an experiential thing that leads up to the performance. So they, so when they actually hear the music, it, um, they can relate to it on a lot of different levels. And not, not just what's the melody, what's this, what's that, but really what are the feelings and what's happening in the piece and that kind of thing. I, I do find that, it's, that I, from my experience as teaching, that it's, it's really relatively simple to get people to, you know, to to pay attention, to feel more comfortable with more complicated music. It's not. It, it, it seems to be almost on the tip of their tongue. It mm -hmm. may take you, mm -hmm. you know, 10 weeks into the semester. But uh, we've got a minute left. Uh, this, this thing, the minute that I'm so scared of. I'm <laughs> John. Well, now we've skipped over this one question you had. What, if any, are the steps you take or would like to take when making something? Somehow that relates to what you were saying mm -hmm. about education. Because I don't think kids are really taught to make something. No, they're not mm -hmm. even taught to, they don't even have a physical education, which is like making that's creative too. Mm -hmm. Just they're to taking recess out of the school. You know, they're know. taking recess out of the public schools, that's among the many terrible many things. Yeah. <laughs> for a long time now. And um, the right. mind needs to rest and play in between conscious studying or conscious work. 